Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Um, just a couple announcements today before we begin. The high school will be using our parking lot tomorrow. I believe that they're all throughout the day. I think it starts at 9 o'clock. But they're bringing people in by name. Um, they're coming in, driving around. Drive up to home and pick up, I think is what it is. So they're coming around and then they'll be coming out, out to our parking lot. So if you come to the church tomorrow, be extra careful uh, because there'll be traffic coming in, uh, going out uh, through most of the day. Um, also, uh, in your bulletin, uh, it didn't make it in there, but after the prayer of the day, after confession and absolution of the prayer of the day, there's a chorus um, that will be singing, uh, Who You Say I Am, uh, but it's not in your bulletin. And then, uh, I was just talking about Kevin. Oh, communion. When we uh, come up for communion, we won't be dismissing you, um, but in your groups, it just we'll start here and work our way back like normal. You guys know your spacing that you want to maintain, so um, we will uh, leave it up to you to, uh, to do it the right way. But uh, I think that's it. Do we have anything else? I don't know if we have anything to announce. Uh, let's begin with our. Father in heaven, we are, we're here today in adoration and reverence. May we worship you in spirit and in truth, drawing near in repentance and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. May we be renewed and refreshed through word and sacrament to bear witness to all the salvation that is in Christ, Christ alone. We praise you and give thanks unto you for showing us your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Uh, get with our first hymn, uh, Praise to the Lord Almighty.
Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have offended you, and justly deserve your title of eternal punishment. I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you in your countless mercies, specifically the holy angels, and your sufferings and death, and your beloved Son. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Father, our Creator and Redeemer, by your call you have made us a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Give us the faith and joy to pray for the salvation of all people and to live holy lives in the forgiveness of our sins. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. 
what a great seed, especially you today. <laughs> this morning's Old Testament reading, written in Exodus 19, verses 2 through 8. The people of Israel set out for Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called them out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be treasured possession among all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me the kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that, were the Lord, that the Lord had commanded them. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our epistle reading this morning, it's written in Romans 5. 6 through 15. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over those sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth and tenth chapter. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest, to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these, first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You receive without pain, give without pay. Require no gold, nor silver, nor copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, 
nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. In whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ. You may be seated. Just a little note on our uh, sermon hymn. If you see in, the, in a verse in the front of it, if you see a little triangle, it's, uh, it's a symbol for the Trinity, but it also means that we're supposed to rise from that verse. So when we come to that, everybody stand up. We sing God loved the world so that he gave his only son, the lost to save, that all who Desire to 
see some type of a change. Now, not all demonstrations are peaceful. As we have been reminded over the last couple of weeks, some are violent, resulting in injury, death, and destruction. And the greatest demonstration of all time was anything but peaceful. But it produced an everlasting change for people of all nations. It was at a place called Golgotha. There on that hill outside of Jerusalem is where God demonstrated his love for us. Our ESV translates verse 8 for our epistle lesson as, But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God shows us, or he demonstrated his love for us. The only way humankind could be changed, be redeemed, the only way mankind could be added to God's cause, his family, the only way we could be rescued from sin, the only way God the Father could show us his amazing love was through the death of his beloved son. What kind of love is this? That God, holy and righteous, would demonstrate his love for sinful mankind by sending his son to die on the cross, suffer for our sins, and then rise for our justification. And what kind of love do we, those who believe this, those who have been changed, who have joined the church's march for life, those who have joined the cause of Christ, show in response to this great love? Today we marvel on this undeserved, unmerited, unmerited love and grace. May it move us to daily show the love of Christ to others, demonstrating it to others. God has demonstrated to us his love and his grace. It is undeserved and it is unmerited. Our text this morning explains that mankind through Adam's disobedience are totally depraved. Sin is in our DNA. Because of this sinfulness, we are conceived and born not just separated from God, but hostile toward Him. Actively opposed to His will and His ways because of this fallen nature's enemies of God. And as we look around at this world, we see this hostility toward God, don't we? God and His law, the things of God, the people of God. It shouldn't surprise us in the slightest, this hate towards God and his people. We also were at one time included in their protest, unable and incapable of saving ourselves, powerless, ungodly, separated and without God, sinners by commission and omission, sinners in our thoughts, our desires, our words, and our deeds. And our text highlights the fact that few would, few would die for anyone who was even good, much less would anyone die for a sinful and depraved enemy. But God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus did. The Son of God did for us not only what we're incapable of doing, but even what we had no desire to do in the first place. Behold the divine love of the Father, not for friends or family, not for equals, not for servants, but for convicted criminals, wicked enemies, haters of God, for the selfish, the homeless, the hopeless, the sinful ones. Those are for whom Christ died. He died for you. Our God did not demonstrate his love through words alone, but by his mighty deeds. Not only words of love and grace, but telling us that we're saved, that wouldn't save us from our sins. But the punishment that we deserve because of our sins was put on Christ. You know, it is pretty easy to express undeserved love to someone by just saying, I love you, when they don't deserve it. But one's words need to be backed up by their actions. As a parent, you want nothing more than to hear the words, I love you, from your children. But you also want that love to be shown by their actions. 
by how they demonstrate their love, by their obedience, and by the way that they live their lives. God shows. God shows his love and his grace like no other demonstration. The Father demonstrated love and his grace by sending his dear Son to suffer and die for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the Son demonstrate his love for the Father in his grace by his humiliation, his perfect obedience, his holy life, by being the sacrifice for sins for the whole world. And the Holy Spirit demonstrates his love and grace by creating and sustaining faith in your hearts through the word and his sacrifice. What comfort and peace this should bring each of you every day. God, while we were in such a pitiful state, sent his son to save us. Christ was willing to die for us and thus reconcile us to God. What blessedness must now be ours that we are God's children and heirs with Christ. What divine acceptance we now have that the crucified Savior is also our living high priest who constantly intercedes for us with the Father. Since, therefore, we now have been justified by his blood, a justification that is in the past and a justification that is in the present and ongoing. Our daily sins do not unjustify us. Much more shall we be saved by Jesus from the wrath of God, for, it, for if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by his death and his Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Johann Gerard writes, He loved us while we were yet sinners, enemies. While he, will he forget us now that we are reconciled by the death of his son? Can he be unmindful of the precious blood of his son when he numbers even the tears and the steps of his godly children? Can Christ possibly forget in his life those for whom he was willing to suffer death? Can he, throned in glory, forget those for whom he bore such awful anguish upon earth? We are now reconciled to God. The barrier of sin has been removed. We have been justified by his blood and declared righteous before God because of what God has done. By God showing his love and his mercy and his grace for us. What assurance and comfort that brings. Now, we in response to God's love and grace, demonstrate the same to others in our daily lives. We rejoice in God through Jesus Christ. Our sins are fully and freely forgiven and forgotten. Eternal life now and forever has not only been promised, but is secure. Jesus in John chapter 3, verse 36, assures us that the gift of eternal life is ours now. Our response, our rejoicing in God, demonstrates this truth in our daily lives. We are born again, and we show. We are washed in his saving blood, remade in his image. His name is written on your brows. We have been given, as Christ's church, given the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciled to God and one another by the power of the gospel, we take the initiative in demonstrating and showing our love and God's love toward others, even those who are not loving in return, or even hostile or hateful. We move beyond mere feelings in our relationships to express our love through sacrificial action. God wants everyone to be saved. <clears throat> Things can be different. The love of God is the same love that he wants us to have toward everyone. Having been reconciled and changed, we need to show and share that with everyone. Living our daily lives in his love and in gratitude for all that he has done for us. Our words and our actions demonstrate this. What kind of demonstrating have you been doing? The 
The Holy Spirit empowers and energizes us through his word and through the sacraments. Today, today, as we receive his body and his blood, hear his word so that we can demonstrate God's grace to and for us. Let us begin our demonstration. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Having heard God's word, let us rise together and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, who was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our common supplications for the well-being of your church throughout the world. So guide and govern it by your Holy Spirit that all who profess themselves Christians be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Send out upon all ministers of the gospel and upon the congregations committed to their care the helpful spirit of your grace that they please you in all things. Lord, in your mercy. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing that they be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Lord, in your mercy. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation, that you would make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel, satisfy the wants of your creatures, and help those who call upon you in any need, especially Mark, Jim, Patrick, Sharon, Bruce, <coughs> and Patty, that they have patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, be released from their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, rose victorious over death and the grave. We remember with thanksgiving all your servants who trust in Christ and now stand in your nearer presence, where all sorrows are turned to joy. Strength, strengthen us in the confident hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, that we await with joy our reunion in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Let 
continue with the service of the sacrament. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate of the forbidden fruit. And you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation. They come to us in his body and blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you, Pastor. Continue with our history.
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the one true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, you who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please rise for us. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to do the, the motion. But uh, if anybody knows them better than me, I mean, who knows them really good? <laughs> okay, I'm going to get All right. Your name.